huge wave of protests, practically all youth, all students, including my university, are on Rostaveli Avenue. My sons are on Rostaveli Avenue. The government is obliged to follow this way. And this law absolutely contradicts this. Revolutions are not the best way of changing the government. The best way is free and fair elections. Welcome to the Black Sky. My name is Piotr Mateusz Bobołowicz, and our guest today is Professor Aleksandr Kuchianidze, Professor of Political Science at uh, Ivana Dzevachishvili Tbilisi State University in Georgia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mm-hmm. We are meeting uh, here today in Lublin, but we are meeting to uh, to talk about Georgia and uh, what's happening right now in Georgia. Uh, we've been observing a wave after wave of protests in Georgia, and yesterday, um, finally, the law that was so protested, so-called Russian law, law on foreign agents, was adopted by the parliament. Yes, unfortunately, it was adopted uh, yesterday. Those, this uh, process has a long history. Uh, my time is limited, uh, but I briefly tell you what's the real problem. The real problem may comes from medieval period, when Georgia fought the Ottoman and Persian empires, and that period were religious wars. Georgia was defending its Christianity. Uh, because it was on the edge of Christian world uh, with Muslim. It was weakened, and at that time, the newly emerging Russian empire appeared. Uh, it was Orthodox Christian like Georgia, and Georgia was hopeful that the Russian empire will help. And in 1783, so-called Georgievsky Treaty uh, was signed between the Eastern King of Georgia of Kaheti, Heraklid II, and Russian Empire. Unfortunately, the finalization of this was that in 1801, Russia annexed Georgia, and Georgia disappeared as an independent state. It was divided in two provinces, Tbilisi and Putaisi provinces, and this is how it was. It, it existed until the Bol- Bolshevik Revolution in uh, 1917. In 1918, Georgia proclaimed the restoration of its independence, and it existed until 1921, when the Bolshevik invasion and two glorious Georgian Bolsheviks, Joseph Stalin. Jugashvili and Sergei Genikidze brought number 11th Red Army to Georgia, which first time was defeated, but then attacked and conquered Azerbaijan, Armenia, and then attacked Georgia from five places. And finally, the Georgian Social Democratic Party, it was the first case when Social Democrats were peacefully elected uh, in European history. It was in Georgia, this party immigrated to Istanbul, then to Paris. Then 70 years of Soviet rule, and after, uh, only after the Soviet collapse, Georgia restored again its independence in 1991. Uh, unfortunately, uh, three years before that, we had one tra- tragic event, April 9, 1989, when Soviet army killed 20 young uh, um, uh, people, mostly uh, female young girls on Rustaveli Avenue because the protesters, they claimed restoration of Georgia's independence. Since that time, Georgia uh, turned its hope to Europe, those it had a long history of European uh, um, uh, orientation. Uh, Georgia always was in the basement of Mediterranean. In 19 years, Georgian intellectuals were getting air, air education mostly in Germany. So it's a long history. But in uh, and after April 9, everybody said, we'll not stay in the Soviet Union. Since that time, Georgia and Russia have quite complicated history. 
Russia supports separatist regimes in Georgia. In 1993, uh, uh, Georgians were expelled from the Autonomous Republic of Abkhazia. Then the war in South Ossetia, so-called South Ossetia, it's a Bolshevik name. Actually, the traditional name is Sama Chablo of this. Uh, and now, uh, then later in 2008, Russia unleashed a war against Georgia, invaded to Georgia, and then proclaimed independence of Abkhazia and so-called South Ossetia. Uh, despite then the president of Georgia, Mikhail Saakashvili, warned the West that uh, passive uh, perception of this expression on, of only we are concerned and deeply concerned will give hope to Putin to continue its aggression. And the final uh, result is today, first it annexed Crimea, then unleashed war in Donbass and Lugansk, and now attacked the whole Ukraine and threatens the West, Poland, Baltic states, and other countries. Uh, in 2012, uh, the Georgian government was re-elected. Before we had the Rose Revolution uh, as anti-corruption, anti-criminal, very effective uh, reforms. Georgia was shaped as modern state, but then government committed serious mistakes. Didn't pay enough attention to democratization, defense and human rights. And this is people, people voted for a different force. Uh, and that was the Georgian Dream Party. Created, who, cre who created it, a uh, uh, Russian oligarch of Georgian, Georgian, ethnically, who made his billions in criminal Russia in the 90s and then returned to Georgia. She first united oppositional parties, but, but, the, but the, after that step by step, parties left in protest because they saw. Russian orientation of this group. And it took 12 years uh, for them to openly declare that they are a pro-Russian party. Uh, before that, they couldn't do it because always all public opinion polls uh, showed that absolute majority of people of Georgia are in favor of European and Euro-Atlantic Euro orientation. The last year's public opinion poll uh, 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 carried out with support of NDI shows that 89% of people in favor of EU integration and more than 75 in favor of NATO integration. So this, this Georgian dream was careful with public opinion. Uh, last year, they tried to adopt a law on foreign agents which caused sharp re reaction in the society. They voted and adopted it, but next day, again, they voted to cancel it and said, we'll never re return to this. As always, their promises are based on lie. This year, they said, no, we'll, we'll adopt it. And they were very aggressive, very decisively uh, uh, adopted it yesterday. Yesterday, after uh, uh, after huge wave of protests, practically all youth, all students, including my university, are on Rostavelli Avenue. My sons are on Rostavelli Avenue. And uh, today, Georgia is deeply divided. Divided on the one hand, there is a ruling party and small group of their supporters, and uh, on the other hand, as absolute majority of the Georgian people, especially a young people, youth. Because 30 years of independence and 30 years of close and closer relations with the European Union and the United States uh, uh, gave us uh, results. We have new generation of students, young people, who repeatedly was in, in the West, they know how the West lives, who graduated from American and best European universities, and they want Europe, they want progress, democracy, they don't want return to Russian dark uh, past. Why this law is dangerous for Georgia? It's uh, not simply as authorities say, Nothing happens, it's just about transparency.
Uh, this uh, now they change the name of this law, not saying that this is about foreign agents, but for uh, about this uh, transparency of those who get Western grants. Uh, but in effect, it's not about transparency because Georgian tax authorities have all rights to check any organizations, any NGO organization, any independent media. It's about freedom for Georgia and where Georgia will go after that. Russians in 2012 adopted similar law and the promises were similar. It's only about transparency. But after that, they made amendments, adopted other laws, and today there, there are even discussions in state Duma that so-called state agents and they are not only those who get uh, Western assistance. Uh, any person who is trying to criticize or disagree with the ruling party with Putin may be jailed, fined, and now State Duma even discussed then to uh, deprive them the right, constitutional right to vote, to be elected or to elect somebody, and even confiscation of property. The result of this law is that part of the opposition is killed, like Alexei Navalny, uh, uh, Nemtsov. Uh, part of them are jailed and part escaped and live abroad. Others keep silence because of fear. We don't want this perspective. Georgians don't want this perspective. Georgian civil society is very strong. And we know that this draft law is aimed at destruction of Georgia's civil society and independent media. This uh, oligarch, his name is Bizine Vanishvili, controls all governmental structures. His bodyguard, former Gordia, is Minister of Internal Affairs. Head of state security is former manager of his private bank. Head of uh, governmental special uh, uh, protection service is former head of his family uh, uh, bodyguard. Uh, the previous prime minister, three months ago, he was replaced and now is chairman of the ruling party. He also was another manager of his private bank. He has parliamentary majority. He controls supreme and constitutional courts. And if there is any uh, political sensitive question, a person will always lose such a court. And the only which he cannot control today is uh, civil society and in the independent media. We believe that he go gets instructions from Moscow and the second motivation of them, or in October, uh, in the end of October, we have the parliamentary election. The parliament then appoints prime minister. Their rating is so low that if elections are free and fair, they will lose. They don't want monitoring from NGOs and uh, media because it definitely they prepare themselves to falsify elections. Look at Lukashenko, Lukashenko's elections. He got, I don't remember, approximately 20%, but painted 80%. Uh, and we don't want this such perspective in, in Georgia. So today it's probably one of decisive um, uh, moments in our history. Unfortunately, uh, authorities try to uh, resist, uh, try to attack, and not only protesters, but also academic, which, was, which is practically the first time after the Soviet collapse. Shevardnadze's government in the 90s, Mikhail Saakashvili's government in the 20s, nobody thought and could uh, interfere in, into students and academic life. Here we see a clear uh, interference, attempts. Here in my computer, I have, you can see, uh, photos of those leaders of the main opposition 
Mal Party, formed Saakashvili's party, biggest. He was severely beaten by police. It's not police reform which was under Saakashvili. Degenerated police today, zombies in masks. Here is his uh, member of the political Soviet. It's another political. He is not from Saakashvili's party, but he was beaten. Here is civic activists, severely beaten. Yesterday, he was taken to hospital. He is professor of our colleague from University of Georgia, also severely beaten. All of them are beaten by police. Police is not protecting citizens against crime. Police is involved in persecution of political opposition and state security too. That is a uh, tough reality in which we uh, live today in Georgia. How do you think uh, will it affect the relations with the European Union? Many many European leaders express their concerns, uh, their protest against uh, this uh, new law. Uh, is it still possible for Georgia to join the European Union with this government? I don't think it's possible to join the European Union with this government. It doesn't mean that Georgia should, you know, European Union should just completely block everything, all effort, because you clearly see that the people of Georgia is in favor of EU and Euro-Atlantic integration. Clearly. And this group of uh, people who captured the power privatize the power uh, and is out of the constitutional space now because in 2017, they themselves ad ad adopted to constitution Article 78. Uh, uh, a chapter article says integration in European and EU Atlantic structures that it would say the constitutional bodies should take all measures within their powers to ensure the full integration of Georgia into the European Union and not Atlantic Treaty Organization. The government is obliged to follow this way. And this law absolutely contradicts this. Therefore, their this law, which they adopted yesterday, is against the constitution, is not legal. They, 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 they are not. Uh, 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 they delegitimated themselves by these actions, uh, and of course, uh, I think that European Union and the United States will use all measures to, uh, I would say, punish this government and those who voted for the adoption of this eighty-four uh, members of the parliament. Uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that people should, should suffer. I mean, first of all, we have a very good achievement. Uh, visa was canceled to the European Union for our young people to go to study, to go to see Europe, to bring this culture to our uh, us. It should not stop for people. It should stop for those who voted for this law, who takes Georgia into wrong direction. They should be sanctioned. And how do you think uh, the events can turn internally? Uh, of course, there will be elections in the in the autumn, in October, but uh, it's still a few months left. Do you think some kind of uh, Euromaidan, as in Ukraine, can happen, or uh, people will just wait wait for elections, or maybe the pressure will um, give a good result and the government will change the decision. First of all, there is no, there is no revolutionary situation to have Euromaidan or something like what happened, Rose Revolution in Georgia. Uh, the previous government reformed not only uh, law reform, reform, enforcement structures, all governmental structures, people living standards approved. Yes, and... Uh, Today, uh, Georgia is, from that point of view, people of Georgia lives much better than before this Rose Revolution. Uh, the second is that revolutions are not the best way of changing the government. The best way is free and fair elections. Uh, and uh, we, sh I mean, people should be uh, ready for that elections. Political opposition should be united uh, and uh, do all possible measures to win these elections. It will be very difficult, of course, uh, but uh, 
I think possible. Uh, so uh, the only way is free and fair elections. Because revolutions, unfortunately, bring to power revolutionaries. And they use, instead of rule of law, they run the country according to their consideration. That is the most dangerous. Because uh, you don't know, never know, what will be the final outcome of this revolution. Will it be the Velvet Revolution? Or will it be, be a bloody conflict and civil war consequences? It's a very risky and dangerous uh, way, especially when the government is already equipped. It has strong police. It's legacy from the previous government, but the, the reformed police, equipped police, trained police, and so on. They, they work for 12 years to appoint on key positions the chief uh, police officers, uh, and then this police is used against uh, political opponents. State security is the same. So uh, we need free and fair elections so that nobody would say the government was dismissed, it was coup d'etat, and uh, is it legitimate, this power or not? Free and fair elections. This is why, despite several weeks, there are each day, Thousands of people, hundreds of thousands are in the streets. Not a single burnt car, not a single shop window was destroyed. This is a peaceful protest against the governmental decisions. Unfortunately, the government is using real police, using tear gas, water, rubber bullets, beating, severely beating, and I showed you what are these only leaders, but there are many, many other people severely beaten by police. Uh, but despite of that, the protest is peaceful and uh, people should achieve results through elections. And do you think it is possible to have those free elections? You said that there is a big chance the government will falsify it. And also with this new, newly adopted law, international organizations will have many problems to, to monitor the election. Of course, it's very difficult, very difficult. Uh, generally, if we look at the globally, uh, authoritarianism strikes back in many countries. Russia, there was hope 30 years ago it will be a democratic country, but today we deal with fascist dictatorship. Look at Belarus, similar. Uh, Central Asian countries, the authoritarian rules. Uh, Georgia is fighting for democracy. Uh, and uh, the ruling party is uh, pushing it to Russia. Uh, nobody can predict what will happen, but it doesn't mean that we sh should stop fighting because they adopted the law. Uh, this struggle should be continued until people wins. And of course, uh, European Union's position and support, United States position, I mean, uh, developed democratic countries help support is extremely important uh, uh, this moment in Georgia. Georgian people should not stay alone, should not feel that they stay, stayed alone. Yeah, and uh, democratic world has brought a variety of peaceful methods, economic methods, sanctions, and so on, uh, to influence decisions of the government. Today they speak about uh, this law is necessary, the interference is, is unacceptable. Uh, their leaders, leader, uh, oligarch, on April 29, he said the global party of war uh, provoked the war in 2008 and provoked the war in Ukraine. That means a collective West, as they say, Russian terminology, provoked this war and not Russia, which means where he looks, this oligarch, uh, and which is not true. It's not true, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, but I think uh, 
with Western assistance, we can manage to uh, achieve uh, results which people of Georgia wants. Um, Just very short last question. Uh, what do you think uh, can be the role of President Zurabishvili in this situation? We have practically the parliamentary republic where the prime minister um, is, uh, uh, runs the state, he controls uh, law enforcement, power structure, and so on, and president is more ceremonial. Those president is chief commander, it has certain rights, and today she is positioning herself as um, not leader of opposition, but an uh, independent force which understands the, the current uh, situation and which is a Western-oriented person. So I think that in future and during the parliamentary election, she could play a, uh, uh, the role of, of a leader who unites oppositional parties. We have problem with oppositional unity, uh, critiques between oppositional parties. This is weakness there. And I think she is exactly this person who could unite opposition parties. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Our guest was uh, Professor Aleksandr Kuchianidze, a professor of political science at uh, Ivana Javahishvili Tbilisi State University in Georgia.